The Easy Rise Cordless Shade Spring System is certified best for kids. In this video, I'll share an overview of the parts and pieces of the system, including minimum tube sizes, maximum weight limitations, and maximum length capability. I'll also demonstrate the process for adding a Roman shade to the headrail and share tips and techniques to help you confidently add this system to your shade projects. The springs are available in six sizes. Each spring has a minimum tube width and a maximum weight capability. The springs range in sizes from 18 inch minimum tube width and two pounds maximum shade weight up to 49 and three quarter inch minimum tube width and seven and a half pounds maximum shade weight. The length adjuster to stop position allows for up to eight feet maximum shade drop as long as the shade is within the maximum weight limitation for the spring size used. All springs fit in a one and a half inch tube. The brackets are available in slotted or wheeled and are sold as a pair. The screws used for attaching the brackets to the mounting brackets are included. The brackets are available in white or black. Use a coin or a screwdriver when making adjustments to the slotted brackets, or turn the wheel on the wheeled bracket for adjustments. Here's a tip. Read the instructions first. If you are assembling your system and have the installation instructions, I recommend reading all the instructions from start to finish before assembling your system. This will avoid questions you may have as you put your system together. Let's assemble the system. For demonstration purposes, I have a very sh small shade sample measuring 20 inches wide by 20 inches long. I have determined the spring size based on the minimum tube width and the maximum shade weight. These specs are shown in the Rolly catalog and on the Rolly company website. Each of these six springs has a different minimum tube width and maximum shade weight. Make sure that you are within the specs when you are selecting your spring. In the instructions, it shows the roller tube deduction to use when using a slotted or a wheeled bracket. I am going to have what is called a waterfall or a uh, fabric coming off the front of my shade. Also in the instructions, it tells you that for this type of a shade with the fabric coming off the front of the board, the spring needs to go into uh, the right side of the tube. Now I'm ready to install the spring into the roller tube. That I am going to line up the grooves on the spring with the ribs on the inside of the tube. So I will place this in here, simply slide it in. When I come up here, I want to make sure to line up the spring stop to go between the ribs on the roller tube. Next, mark the spring side of the tube. Now here's a little tip for you. If you forget to mark the tube for the spring side, the end of the spring has a little screw in it. For the length adjuster, it looks very similar, but it does not have a, a screw in it. So should you forget to mark this, you can tell the difference before you put the brackets on. You take the length adjuster, and you want to make sure that this disc is screwed up against the spring. 
So if you, if you get your length adjuster and this disc is not touching the spring, simply roll it up. But you don't, you want it touching, but you don't want it over tightened. And then you're going to place the length adjuster into the tube, lining up the grooves with the matching ribs inside the tube. Press the spring all the way into the tube until the shoulder of the spring contacts the tube. You'll do the same thing with the length adjuster. When the length adjuster is fully inserted into the tube, the shoulder will contact the tube. Install the mount brackets on both ends of the dust board. Center the brackets on the dust board and inset them from the end of the dust board depending upon the type of brackets that you're using, either slotted or wheeled. Please refer to step 5A in the installation instructions. I have already marked for the brackets and I have already pre-drilled my holes. So now that I've got the holes pre-drilled, I am ready to install the brackets onto the dust board. Here's a tip, and this is very important. And this information is shown on your installation instructions on step number six. Before you attach your lift cord or your lift band material to your tube assembly, you want to determine if you want the cord or lift band coming off the back of the tube or the front of the tube. And here's what I mean. If you are doing a reverse mount shade where your fabric is coming off the back of your board, then your lift band material or your cords will also come off the back of the tube. And if this is the case, then you are going to make sure that the spring is on the left side of your shade as you're facing the front of the shade. For this shade, this is a front mount, also known as a waterfall mount. So the fabric is coming off the front of the dust board. In that case, the lift band material or the cords, the lift cords will also come off the front of the tube and the shade spring will be on the right side of the shade. As you're standing and you're looking at the shade from the front, that spring will be on the right side of your shade. You want to make sure that you are taking care of this prior to moving on to the next step. Another very important tip is when you are using either lift band material or your cords, you must have at least three wraps of lift band material or cord around your tube when your shade is all the way extended, all the way in the down position. Remember that. Now, if you're using lift band material, you would simply remove the protective paper from the tape and you would adhere your lift band material to the adhesive tape. And then you would wind that lift band material onto the tube, making sure that you've got full, three full wraps with the shade all the way extended. Now I'm going to show you 
how to mark for the placement of the cord clips, and I will show you how to place the cord clips on your tube. When your shade raises, and I'm talking about when you're using cord, not this is not for the lift band material. When you are using a cord and your shade raises up, you must have your cord clips offset from the rows of cord so that your cord does not overwrap on itself. So you need to make sure that they are they're offset. For the longest size shade, I will offset them at least three inches. Usually I don't go any more than three inches. What I mean is it's going to be, and this is a very, very tiny shade, so I'm only going to go in two inches. But I'm going to follow the cord placement and I've got my tube centered on my fabric and I'm going to place my ruler just above where the cord is and I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to come over two inches and make a mark. For the center cord, I'm going to come over two inches from the center and I, I'm alternating the, the sides that I'm, I'm making the marks on. And then from this cord, I will come over two inches again from where the cord is. All right, so now when I place my, my clips on, on my tube, I'm going to make sure that I'm using these marks as my placement. Each of the clips have two holes. So I'm going to place, I know this cord is extra long uh, based on what I really need, but I'm going to place the cord up through one of the holes and I'm going to tie it on, tie the cord onto the clip. And then I'll just tighten it down. And then to make it easy to uh, attach the cord, I'm going to use two flat headed screwdrivers in the slots of the uh, clip. Now I'm going to take the side of the clip with the knot. I want to make sure that the knot is facing towards the cord coming up the back of the shade. And my mark that I marked is right there. So I'm going to take two screwdrivers, flat headed screwdrivers, all right. I'm going to pry the clip open with the screwdrivers and I'm going to place the edge of the clip right on that mark. Okay, so I've got the first one on. The knot is facing the cord. The second one. I usually go around three times or so and then just tighten it down. Make sure that the knot is facing the cord. Got my screwdrivers. Clamp it open. Coming right to the edge of that marking and I want to make sure that my holes are all in a line with one another. this one down just a little bit because I kind of missed. All 
All right, so I got that clip on. The knot is on the side towards the cord. The clip is right on the edge of my marking. And now I'll do my third one. Honestly, putting these clips on is the hardest part, but uh, this tip that I learned from someone on Facebook is actually absolutely the best thing and the easiest way I have found to put the clips on. Again, I've got my knot on the side of the clip towards the cord. The edge of the clip is on the edge of the marking, and there it is. Okay, so now I am going to, I'm not ready to attach the, uh, the tube to my brackets yet. I'm just placing it about where it will be, and I'm gonna pull down on, on my cord. Um, but before I tighten this all the way, remember I need three wraps of the cord on my tube when the shade is extended all the way down. So I'm just taking some of this slack out and tightening the orb. Okay, now I'm going to, remember I want my cords coming off the front of my tube. So I'm going to wrap this so that I've got the cord wrapped around my tube three times. There's two, and then there's three. All right, so I've got this one tightened up a little bit too much. That one's tightened up too much. Okay. Now I'm placing the tube approximately where it will be in the brackets. And I'll one, two, three wraps. Okay. And you can see as I wrapped this, you can see that the cord comes over and wraps around the two, but there's not an overlap. So that's why we want to offset the clips from the rows of cord. Before we go on and preset the shade up stop position, I want to share another tip with you. To release the locking mechanism in the spring, the roller tube assembly must rotate roughly a quarter turn, which allows the spring to release and raise the shade. To allow the spring to release when you're using the lift band material, you need to have extra travel distance in the fabric at the bottom of your shade to pull the shade down and release the spring. If you're using lift cords, you can also attach a pull to the most centered lift cord after you've secured your other cords. Simply pull the handle enough to allow the spring to turn one quarter turn. The spring will release and the shade will rise. Now let's preset this up stop position of the shade. With the shade laying on the table, Again, it's not attached into the brackets at this point. You're going to roll the shade up to the determined up position of your shade. So I've got a gridded tabletop here, and I know I want mine to stop at about nine inches. So I'm just going to put that tassel right there at my nine inches and I'll pull the shade up making sure that I've got uh, the, the board either attached to the table or I'm just making sure that it's not uh, scooching down the table and I'll roll the shade up until the bottom of my shade reaches that um, uppermost 
desired position. Now I kind of need to shake the fabric down a little bit and then I can place it back on my table. This is, this is slightly awkward when you're doing this. Um, especially the larger the larger your shade, the more awkward it will be, but it is definitely a necessary step. So then you're going to uh, just place your tube back down and you're gonna keep all of these wraps on your shade at this point. With the tube assembly still on the table, still not attached to any brackets in the board, but it's on the table laying flat. Now it's time to pre-tension the spring. You want to make sure that you are aware of where your spring is. You can see here are my red marks. You're going to take the crank and you're going to place the end of the crank over the uh, spring section of the tube. Now I'm going to slide this it's still flat on the table but i need to uh i need to pull this uh, off of, of the table somewhat so that when i am turning the spring i i have room for my uh for the crank now i'm going to be looking at the instructions that come with the system and i'm going to look at the shade length drop to find out how many turns are required to tension the spring. Initially, you may need more than are shown on the instructions. And quite honestly, once you've done this over and over again, you'll get a feel for what it feels like when the spring is, is tensioned enough. Uh, and don't worry if, if the crank comes off of the, the spring and all of a sudden the spring starts um, uh, releasing itself, don't worry, you can just start over again. It ha has happened to me numerous times. I'm going to put this in and I'm going to make sure that I am turning this clockwise. The roller spring must be laying flat on the table when setting the spring tension. Oops, okay, see, it fell off. It didn't, it didn't release, but I'm just going to go ahead and um, feel this. I stopped paying attention is what happened. So I'm going to continue tensioning this until it has the required numbers of turns. And then rather than just pulling the crank off, I'm going to let it back off on itself until it stops. So now it has stopped. I can pull this off and now I'm ready to add the brackets to the shade, put the tube in the brackets, and then I'll put this up on a stand and uh, test out my shade. Install the end brackets by sliding them into the mounting brackets and securing them with the screws provided. You might need to turn the roller tube slightly to get it to engage with the end bracket, but be careful not to release the spring tension when installing the end bracket into the spring end of the roller tube assembly. Let's test my shade. I'm showing you the back view because I want you to take a look at the shade mechanism, the spring mechanism as I am raising the shade up and pulling it down. The two outer cords have been tied off. The cord in the center, I released the orb so that I've got some play uh, in this cord. So I'm going to pull down on the center cord and you watch the spring mechanism. When it pulls about a quarter of a turn, then it will rise up. I can see that I've got too much tension on my spring because if the shade doesn't rise all the way up or if it goes up too fast, you may need to adjust the spring tension. To add more spring tension, use one hand to hold the roller tube assembly and turn the tension adjuster on the end of the tube assembly that has the spring. 
Use a flathead screwdriver or coin to adjust the slotted bracket. Or use your hand to turn the wheeled bracket. Turn counterclockwise to reduce the spring tension. Turn clockwise to increase the spring tension. You can adjust the stopping location of your shade after it has been installed. Be sure to use the end of the roller tube assembly that you inserted the length adjuster. If you want the shade to stop further down, pull the shade down to the point you want the up stop position to be and hold one hand on the roller tube assembly. Turn the adjustment slot or wheel clockwise until you feel the adjustment start to get tight, but don't over tighten. Cycle the shade up and down to check the position. If you want your shade to stop further up than your initial stop position, use one hand to hold the roller tube assembly and turn the adjuster, slot, or wheel counterclockwise by one quarter turn. Cycle the shade up and down to check the position. If you want to make further adjustments, just repeat the steps. Hold the roller tube assembly, counterclockwise a quarter turn, and then cycle the shade up and down again. All length adjustments on your shades will be done using the end of the roller tube assembly that you inserted the length adjuster. Attach a pull handle. Remove the orb from the center cord and make sure that the center cord is going through the ring at the bottom of the shade. Mark the placement for the pull handle. Place a cord inside the pull handle and use something small such as a nut or a washer that you can place the cord through and that will fit up inside the pull itself. Tie the cord around the nut or the washer, check the placement of your pull, and then remove any excess cord.